Do you work with serverless and find that as a project grows, your serverless YAML file gets longer and longer, and that becomes really hard to work with? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can resolve that issue. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best AWS and serverless developers that you can be. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can take our main serverless YAML file and split it into multiple subfiles. This will be really useful when your project grows so that you can jump straight to an individual file instead of having to scroll through one massive long serverless.yaml file. So now that we're in the code, we're going to look at the serverless project that we're going to be cleaning up today. So it has a provider, some plugins, package, and some custom configuration, but we'll be leaving that as is for today. We then go down and we see that we have a list of functions. We've got quite a few functions here, and this is one of the things that we're going to be cleaning up. And then we have our resources. We have an S3 bucket and a DynamoDB table with some secondary indexes. Whilst this isn't a massive serverless YAML file, you can use this same process on any serverless project, even if there are hundreds and hundreds of resources, where it becomes really messy to try and update things where you're scrolling up and down. If we go right the way to the bottom, we can see that this is 113 lines. So the first thing we want to do is get all of these Lambda functions put into a separate file. So to do that, we can go into our folder structure, create a new folder structure called YAML. And then in here, we're going to create a new file called functions.yaml. I'm just going to change the spacing to be four. And then what I'm going to do is copy everything from here all the way down to the end of our functions. And I'm actually going to cut that and paste it all into our functions.yaml file. Because this was all underneath that functions option, I need to first select it all and use shift tab to reduce the spacing so that everything is aligned to the first column. And now we need to reference that file from inside our core serverless YAML file. The way that we do that is we use dollar sign curly braces and then a file function. And into that function, we pass in the path of the file we want to insert which in our case is yaml forward slash functions dot yaml. And it is as simple as that. Now, whenever we run the SLS deploy, when it gets to our functions, it is going to look inside our functions yaml file and use the content from here underneath this value. Now we're going to move on to our resources and we're going to do something very similar. The difference with this is instead of copying all of the resources into one file, which is fine in our case because we've got two, we're going to be copying them into multiple different files. When you've got say tens and tens of different resources, having them all in one file, might be almost as hard to work with as having them all in this serverless YAML file. So showing you how to split them into separate 
individual files will help you a lot when it comes to your serverless projects. So the first thing we need to do is in our serverless YAML file, sorry, in our serverless YAML folder, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this s3.yaml. Again, I'm just going to quickly update the spacing, then go back into our main serverless YAML and copy everything from resources, this capital resources, to the end of our bucket and paste that in here. Again, I'm going to fix the spacing and save that and then head back into our serverless YAML. We can now delete out the S3 content and then repeat the process for DynamoDB. So create a new file called dynamo oh, yeah, dynamo.yaml, copy everything from capital resources to the end of the dynamo resources. And this time I'm just going to cut that and paste it in here. I'm going to fix the indentation. Like that. And now we can add the resources files to this resource list. One thing you may have noticed is in both the Dynamo and S3, they both have a copy of this capital resources. That is one thing that is going to be slightly different. Instead of just copying each section, you're actually copying the resources themselves. So now in here, what you can do is we can create a list because we're pointing at two different files that both need to be copied underneath this section. So here, again, we can use the file function, yaml forward slash s3 dot yaml. And the same for the dynamo db. So that's file, normal parentheses, and then it's yaml forward slash dynamo dot yaml. If we save this, we've now reduced it from, I think it's 113 lines down to 45. This is a lot cleaner as you just have your provider, your plugins, some custom configuration, and then references to some files. You can then know that if I want to add a new function, I can just go to the function YAML or a new bucket to the S3 YAML section. This is gonna be much cleaner and much easier to work with than having everything in a single file. If we go into our terminal, and were to run SLS deploy, then it would deploy in exactly the same way as if we had all of this configuration in our single file. As you can see here, our send email.js is being compiled because it is being referenced inside our functions YAML. In this video, we've gone through and seen how we can take chunks of our serverless YAML file and extract them into their own file. We've done this with the functions as well as resources, but there are more things you could extract if certain sections of your serverless YAML file are getting particularly large. In the end, this ends up with a system and a folder structure that's much easier to work with and makes it much quicker and easier to find the part that you're looking for. If you've learned something new in this video, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, as it helps share this video to more developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so that you get notified next time I upload an AWS and serverless video. 
Thank you, and I'll see you in that next video.